Hey guys, Brit the Stormtrooper, and welcome to another unboxing and first impression review. So this is this uh, new thing that I'm trying out where I open a figure and experience it for the first time in front of the camera. You're going to see my reactions and my first impressions of this figure, and uh, I'll give you my best review of it as I'm experiencing it for the first time. Kind of a cool little thing that I'm trying out since I'm not really set up with my my collection room my studio if you will is not set up uh this is kind of an easy uh type of video to shoot and very interesting to kind of see uh how a figure is experienced for the first time out of the box right without having to prepare a review for it and and, and make sure that i know the transformation and all of that so today's uh video is going to be a little interesting because previously i've done the netflix uh megatron for the siege netflix megatron or you know, Earthrise Megatron, Siege Megatron, whatever, uh, the, the the Netflix version. And then also I recently uh, did the Earthrise Starscream. Both relatively simple figures, uh, also figures that I was familiar with, especially the Megatron since it's my third version of it. Um, already familiar with that one. So it wasn't really difficult to fiddle with them and handle them on camera or anything like that. Today's video, I think, is going to be a little interesting and it's going to prove a little more challenging because today's subject is Studio Series 61 Sentinel Prime. I just picked this guy up today and uh, I'm really excited for this guy. Now, this is my first time doing a Studio Series Transforming for the first time on camera. Uh, so we'll see if I can get through it because uh, Studio Series tend to have a little more... Uh, um, uh, complicated or complex of a transformation if you will so we'll see so here we go uh voyager class so it retail for about 30 bucks i found it at target today studio series uh 61 i really like the sentinel prime design i didn't care much for the design or how the character was treated in the movie but i really do like the design i like the way the robot looks and i'm a big fan of that truck mode and we can see that right around the back of the box here um, and, and I know that it's it's quite a different vehicle from, but it reminds me a lot of the old Hammets and PLS trucks that I used to drive in the Army. Uh, that front nose and the wheels behind the driver really kind of remind me of it. It's a, now again, it's a very different truck uh, from Hammets and PLSs, but it, just the look of it really reminds me of, of what those trucks were like and my experiences with them. And this is a very cool fire truck. Every year we do a trunk or treat at the Coast Guard base, uh, myself and my fellow Ghostbusters. And they always bring out these fire trucks and do demonstrations for us of the hoses and everything. It's so cool to watch them go. So there's the back of the box. It's showing us Sentinel Prime and uh, the, tr the truck again. And it's showing us the base down here that uh, comes inside of the box itself. 32 steps for transformation. We'll see if I can get through all of them uh, here in front of the camera for the first time side art of sentinel prime on the one side and uh, again some more side art of sentinel prime there top bottom let's open the box and check out sentinel prime for the first time okay so here's sentinel prime and i've got my handy dandy nippers so right away we're just going to start with cutting the tape up opening up the box and let's see what we got inside i am not a box keeper so i usually don't worry about too much about the contents or anything like that but there's the base if you're planning on using you know the base for display there's what it looks like it's got chicago in the background and uh pretty much the way i remember chicago from my last trip there that's a story for another day we'll set that off to the side we've got instructions and uh we've got that uh, little warning thing here so there's that set that aside here are the instructions let's take a look at those let's see what these guys look like oh we got those long tiny instructions huh all right so that's that's what the instructions look like it's yeah the little long thin strip there we'll see if we can get through it i'm going to keep these handy right up here and we'll see if i end up needing those or not and then of course sentinel prime itself let me do this i like to do this in this manner take these guys and cut them in right here so that all of the uh, little cut tags things fall into the box and I don't have to pick them up again. I need new nippers. I've been using these, you know, obviously, uh, you guys have heard, I moved recently and I've used these nippers for unpackaging or, you know, untaping and opening boxes and I have destroyed them. They don't, they, they don't even bounce back anymore. They're supposed to spring open. They don't do that and the blades are all messed up. These used to be once upon a time my Gundam nippers. Now, I would not bring these things anywhere near a Gundam figure for fear of ruining the plastic as I'm trying to cut it. 
Yeah, I have to go before I build my next Gundam, which I don't know when that's going to be. But whenever that is, I need to go to the hobby store and pick myself up a new pair of nippers because these are done. Oh boy. All right. All right. Once uh, once all the ties are cut, Santana comes out relatively easy. And uh, we got the... I am assuming that this is... Yeah, this has to be part of the cannon for the top of the vehicle there. It's got a little hinge right there, so that's probably going to just pop right on. And of course, his sword here. And I know that his sword splits, so we can put it in his hands. And then um, we'll be able to also separate that for the truck mode. Alrighty, set that aside. I don't think we need the nippers anymore. So we can put those away. And here is Sentinel Prime. Now, right away, let me see if I can figure out. This looks like it's just going to pop in right here in the back. So we'll pop that on, and that seems to be right, just like that. And then let's, uh, let's leave this aside for the moment. Let's check out Sentinel Prime. So again, this is my first time experiencing this figure but he looks just like he did in the movie and again uh like i said earlier if you missed it i really do like the design of this figure i really did like the way this guy looked uh can't say that i cared too much about the character the way they treated him in the movie um but uh it's a michael bay movie you know can't expect much but he looks good he looks really really nice let's see uh looks like the head can go up and down a little bit and turn side to side i can't tell if that is a ball joint I don't believe that it is because of the way it bobs. See how it bobs when I try to turn it sideways? It forces me to push it back down again. So there's that. Let's see the cape. Uh, moves up and down and it opens and closes. Arms can go all the way around, in and out. Rotate at the elbow, bend at the elbow. Is there a wrist rotation? Yes, there is. It, look, yep, it's got a wrist rotation there. I believe there's a waist rotation. Yes, it does. Uh, limited because of the, you know, it's a kibble. It's a, it's a movie transformer, so there's kibble. Right away, that seems to be loose. That shouldn't... Yeah. Okay. I believe this is mistransformed, I believe. Yes, it is. So this tab... There's a tab... So right out of the box, it's mistransformed. All right, so there's a tab here on the back of the panel that should be up here. As you saw, this was folded in like this. So to help keep it in place, that tab there needs to be right up there so let me go ahead and do that and I see that when you do that that is probably gonna keep it yeah so when you do that that is going to keep the waist from rotating so I suppose you could always fold it back down so that you would have a waist rotation if you absolutely needed to have one I guess for possibility or if you're taking pictures or whatever uh, but for playing you're not gonna have a waist rotation if you have this pegged correctly of course if you unpeg it you can turn the, uh, the waist, but then, uh, as you saw, it would just separate from the torso as well. So posing only, pictures, that kind of stuff. Legs go in and out, forward and backward. Rotate at the knee. Bend at the knee. Uh, the ankles don't... Oh, okay. The ankles seem to tilt up and down a little bit. No ankle tilt. So that's about it. Okay, cool. And now let's check him out with his... Let me see if I can get him standing straight. Give him his sword. And does this thing cut forward or backwards? <laughs> Let's cut it forwards. So as you saw, it just separates and then it just pegs together like that again. So let's put that guy on him. And since I have a couple of figures here on my desk, we'll go ahead and do a... You know, it just so happens that I have Megatron in robot mode. So we'll do a comparison with Megatron, another Voyager in robot mode, and then I have my Optimus Prime, my Earthrise Optimus Prime in vehicle mode, so when we get to truck mode, that'll be a pretty cool comparison. So here is Sentinel, and here is Megatron, so you can see, oh, let's see is that about their level there, so it looks like Sentinel is just a little taller than Megatron, so it's a pretty good size figure for a Voyager, that looks pretty good. All right. Moment of truth. Can I get through this transformation based on memory and what I have seen on reviews alone? We'll find out tonight, but first let's meet our contestants. Okay. <laughs> so let's start with the back here. We're just going to clip this shut. As I believe it should do. Yep. There's a little 
teeth there, but in, man, that is tough. That's very tough to pop in there. I feel like I'm going to break it if I force it. Okay, there it went. Wow, that was uh, unpleasantly tough. This also goes down back. Oh, I like this. Okay. I wonder why. There's a peg hole there for that. Okay. Okay, so there's that. That was unpleasantly tough. And right away, I'm seeing, even with the back peg then, look at this, the waist keeps popping off. And, yeah, I don't know if there's a way to tap that in so that it doesn't, but it just seems to come off real easily. I don't like that. Of course, it's going to look fantastic on the shelf, but, um, yeah, I can't say that I like that. That's, that, that, that waist piece just popping off like that. That's no good. I don't like that. These should come up when in robot mode. So these little skirts here should be up in robot mode. So I'm pushing those up and I'm just going to push them back down because I know they're going to go in for truck mode. And again, just getting those skirts up, you can see again, the waist. So that's that's not good. That's that's I don't like that. There is a peg. What looks like a peg in there. So it looks like it should peg in the place. And I felt a little snap there. And that maybe that maybe that's all it was. Maybe it just wasn't snapped in all the way. And uh, it seems to be holding better now. As I'm fiddling, I'm actually pulling on it, and it's not popping off where before it was just coming off for fiddling. So maybe that's all it was. So maybe that peg just needed to peg in there. So there it is. So let's let's see as I fiddle with other stuff if that pops up again. I know that these shoulder pads are going to come down, and they do have tabs in there. So those are going to come down and tab in. And are they down all the way? They are. There's little peg holes there where they should come down. really get in there to see them. Okay. So those are in, and I think the chest will open. Arms will come forward, and they will angle down a little bit at the elbow, backwards elbow like that. Alrighty. Let's see. This should come up. These should come back. And then this is going to open. And this whole thing is going to rotate in a really cool way. So this head's going to come down here. As far down as it'll go. And that should allow me... Or do I need to maybe unpeg this so that I can move it? And there is... Yeah, so right here there's a rotation. See that? See how that rotates? So that needs to come down to get all the clearance there. And that should allow me to bring the arms back now panels back and there's tabs on the side panels here tap those there just get the arms under that tap those there and if I remember correctly there should be yeah okay we're back sorry about the cut there all right so we were doing the arms and the forearms are going to peg in together so those are gonna peg in and then the actual fists themselves are gonna go into these pegs up here at the top so let's get those lined up and pegged into place. I think when I rotated the uh, rest, I kind of misaligned myself there. Okay, cool. So that's all done. This is done. And now we need to rotate the waist around. And this is going to flip down. The whole front of the truck is going to come up. I'm going to line these up. These Oh, these actually snap into place. That's pretty cool. So let's line this up. If I remember correctly, this should tap it. Yep, there's a tap there. It's going to go right in there. Let's just get that all the way up there. The panel's collapsed on me. Again, the side, this side panel here collapsed on me, so I'm going to back up and get that back out again. Okay, so there's little slots there. I see. So lined up the side panels first, then bring the roof up and tap it into place. Cool. And that's pretty much it for the top of the truck. Um, you know, we have to remember later to bring the mirrors up. The mirrors are going to rotate up. I don't know if I want to do that now or maybe later. And, of course, the hose is going to come up, too. But that might be something that might be better left to the end so that they're not just sticking out, little small pieces sticking out. All right. So I know that there is a tab between the front wheels that you have to make sure that it tabs in. Otherwise, um, the whole back of the truck's not going to line up, so... Now, on the, let's see, on the legs here, these should come up. Yep, okay. And then 
and this ankle piece should have on the side here. Yep. And that's just going to come down like that. And like that. This comes up, and this whole thing should rotate. Now we turn the toe in, bring this back down. There's a tab here that should go right in there. And of course, through the series stuff, we gotta get everything lined up just so. And that should get us there. Okay. Alright, so there's gonna be a lot of panels here I think we're gonna have to fiddle with later down the road. Let's get that up. Let's rotate that. One tab. Out and over. Bring down the toe. Bring down the shin guard and tab into place. Panel, panel, panel. There's my tab. Okay, there's that. Okay, so now these. I wonder if I pick these in now or later. Okay, so there's that. So look at how the whole waist. Oh, the whole waist is double hinged there. Okay. So that's gonna bring that down, and there's that tab there. Tapped into place. Ah, I see. Okay, so now we're just going to bring the sides up and tap the side panels into the top of the truck. And then we'll tap the legs together at the end towards the back of the truck. Let's see if that works. So already I'm having problems here lining up panels. Does that have something to do with this? I see, okay, so it's the same tab that was there for the waist that was not really tabbing in the place for robot mode. It's the same tab that's inside the waist that needs to go all the way forward and clip into place, and that should now allow me to snap these panels, and they're, not, they're definitely lining up better. They're not any easier to tab in, but they are definitely lining up better than they were. So there's that. So that did line up that time. Okay. Alrighty, so let's see if we have the same luck over here. Just kind of straighten these guys up. Line up the tabs. Get those panels in there. Yeah, that seems to be going well so far, for stu especially for a studio series that I'm transforming out of memory, really. And that does seem like it's level there. That's good. All right, so now let's get these guys. These uh, handles are going to turn, and then they're just going to... Um, I thought these would peg in somewhere in there, but it doesn't look like that's the case. There's just two slots up here and here that these two tabs here and here are going to go into. So let's pop those into place. Come on. Okay, that went in. Same thing on this one. Tab. This rear tab is tight. It's kind of hard to get in there. Now I'm going to bring my mirrors up. And I'm going to straighten out my hose. I'm going to check and see. It appears like, yeah, all my wheels. You see, that is straight. And all my wheels are rolling. There it is. Guys, I, uh, we did it. Uh, we have ourselves a fire truck right there on camera for the first time. Very, very cool. I like this a lot. This is a really cool fire truck. Again, I just absolutely love the design of this vehicle. And uh, yeah, this is really cool. I have to say, um, I have the other two Sentinel Prime figures from this movie. And uh, I definitely think they knocked it out of the part with the studio series on this one again, uh, as they have so many times already. Um, you know, some studio series have been kind of hit and miss. Uh, some of them have kind of been out of the park, and I think this one knocked it out of the park because the um, the original figure, that leader class figure, was just super complicated. Uh, that wasn't complex. It was just complicated and not fun to transform. Uh, the Voyager figure simplified things a lot. It was a good-looking figure. It was a good-sized figure. It was easier to transform. It did a lot of cheating, though, and it didn't look as great as the movie model did. This guy, not so hard to transform. It's complex, but it's not complicated. And it's a good-looking figure. It looks like the movie model. Uh, a lot more detailed than the other two figures that we got. And we got ourselves a really nice fire truck here with all the details. There's our, our hoses here on the top, on the front there, the mirrors on the front. Very, very nice. We've got to check out the top there. we got our gear up here on the top. 
I wonder if these are the cylinders from the movie, the ones they were using for the space bridge. I don't know, but maybe I don't know. Uh, well, no, I think maybe those were longer, and they, he had them here on the sides. Maybe if I remember correctly, it's been a while. Check out the ladder detail on the back there. Not a whole lot of robot stuff hanging out. Look, I mean, really, it, it's it's it's. I mean, you got these questionable things sticking out of the back there. And if you want to look super carefully, it's actually hard to look even on purpose. You can see the top of the head inside of the window there. But it's it's really kind of uh, very well hidden because of the of the uh, tint on the glass and the angle of the head and all of that. So really, not a whole lot of robots showing off here. So if you didn't know any better, uh, you wouldn't know that this was a Transformer other than, you know, all the obvious panels on the vehicle. But other than that, it hides the robot very, very well. This did its job very well. Let me get Optimus out here for comparison. And uh, Optimus has the ex uh, the little extension piece there. So just so you can see what these guys look like together. It's kind of a size comparison for you guys so you can see. And I guess since I could ride up there on top of the trailer. So there's that. Uh, it's a very good looking or a very good size figure. I like this a lot. Very, very cool and very happy that we were able to get that on camera without the help of instructions, which is not my thing. I always look at instructions first. I always want to make sure that I'm transforming them right and not going to mess anything up or break something by doing it wrong or anything like that. I am not usually the transform it off the cuff kind of guy. I've watched a couple of reviews, so I kind of know what I was getting into, but still, Studio Series 10 will be a little more complicated sometimes. Very cool figure. I really, really like this a lot. And this not picked in all the way. There we go. That picked in. That, that was not picked in all the way there. That probably, that lined it up even more. That actually feels even straighter now. Rolls really nicely. Look at that. All my wheels are on the floor, on, on the surface, on the floor surface, and all my wheels are turning even on this slick surface here. So, very, very well done. Very, very nice figure. All right, guys. So there it is. Uh, first impressions review of uh, Studio Series 61 Sentinel Prime. Very, very happy with this figure. Very pleasantly surprised or impressed. I uh, like this figure a lot. I have not had, at first I thought we were going to have an issue with the waist there, but as you can see that is, once you figure out where that tab is, pop it in there real good and secure. You have to do that for both modes, both in robot and in truck mode. Once it's there, it's there. As you can see, it's not popping off on me anymore. And then of course you want to make sure that the back panel here, that is tabbed in there. And then the cape tabs into that panel as well. So that's nice and secure and that's going to uh, get your figure in a really nice pose. And you can see him there with his... Uh, blade there very very cool figure i am very happy with this i love the uh <laughs> it's just i'm pegging stuff here just moving around too much i love the uh robot mode robot mode and of course again like i mentioned earlier the detail on this is really nice though i especially like the added detail on the windows on the chest here this is stuff that was missing from the previous figures so that looks really really good uh overall not a whole lot of back cable uh, as a, you know, he's got, I guess, what we would expect. He does have that cape there, and we do have to have a way to deal with that hose and that top of the truck and all of that. But uh, not very kibbly. Excuse me. Uh, not, this is why I don't like doing stuff in front of the camera. Not very kibbly. Uh, well proportioned, good looking figure. And then, of course, that truck mode is beautiful. I absolutely, I am in love with that truck mode. So. Yeah, I guess that about does it for this uh, uh, first unboxing and first impression reviews. I hope you guys are liking this format. Again, it's kind of an off-the-cuff, off fun thing to do. It's not scripted. I don't have to look up retail prices and measurements and all that stuff. It's just kind of, hey, let's open it up and let's see how we like or dislike this figure right out of the box. What problems do we find? What do we learn about it along the way? It's, it's kind of a fun thing to do together on camera. Um, and, and I'm having a lot of fun with it, and I hope you are too. Uh, so as always, guys, uh, if you could, please give me a subscribe, give me a like, uh, give me a thumbs up, all that good stuff. And again, <laughs> I went out looking for the Seeker 2-pack. That's what I was looking for today uh, when I found this guy. So uh, I was I was really happy that I didn't think I was going to ever buy another movie figure again. And uh, here I was, uh, Sentinel Prime. I just absolutely fell in love with it. I had to have it. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I don't know when my next video will be, so make sure you're subscribed and notified so that uh, whenever that is, you'll be notified, you'll find out. And uh, I'll talk to you next time.